All right, so I got all these computers for free from several computer shops that were going to recycle them all. All of these were sitting in uh, recycling piles that were just going to be tossed out. And I got a couple of them from a local business that after I fixed a computer for them, they just had a bunch sitting around that were extra that they didn't want. So they just gave them to me and said, here, just take these and get rid of them. So I got all these free computers. Everything in this whole pile was 100% free. All I had to do was go pick it up. And I was thinking I could take every single machine apart and maybe build one single good machine out of all these pieces. I'm thinking we'll have to exclude these Macintoshes because those are going to be very proprietary and not compatible with anything else. And plus those are kind of cool all by themselves and they might still work. So I'll leave those two alone. And after we select all the parts that we're going to use to build our single good computer, I will salvage every last component from the rest of these computers just to see how many parts we can actually get out of a computer that was otherwise just going to be garbage. All right, I'm just going to bring the computers over here to the table one by one and we'll see what we got. All right, we'll start off with this HP Pavilion P2 series. Wow, look at that. Not a whole lot going on in that case. Look at this big computer, big computer case, and inside, tiny little motherboard, no power supply, no expansion slots, just that, and that's it. No hard drive. This is how cheap this computer is. There's three screws holding the fan in, and over here, there's nothing. Just three screws, that's how cheap they are. All right, that's all we got from that computer. Just a fan, three gigs of DDR3, a CD drive, a motherboard with a very slow AMD Vision CPU on it, an IO shield, some screws, and that's it. All right, next computer is this HP Compact DX2200. Looks old, Windows XP era. Let's see what's in it. Okay, we got one Beztec power supply, a 92mm fan, 80GB SATA hard drive, a DVD-ROM drive, a motherboard with a Pentium D, 2.8GHz uh, in it, and then it's heat sink, and some wires and cables, and that's it. You left me standing one day. E-Machines ET1331G-07W rolls right off the tongue. Claims to have 4 gigs of DDR2 and a 640 gig hard drive. Let's see what's in there. When I haven't paid attention, I come upon a tree. You'll be smiling back at me. Baby, when I get my act together, I'll have it all figured out. Then I won't have to worry about All right, that had an 80 plus certified Delta power supply there, a DVD writer, and sure enough, it had four gigs of DDR2 in it, and I presume this is the Athlon X2. But lately, I've been getting through the season. Next, we have this little Asus computer, and 
The guy at the shop told me that one day it just stopped working and they were using it there in their shop. So if the computer guy couldn't fix it, then chances are it's probably actually dead. But the case is kind of unique. I've never seen an Asus case like this. From the ASUS machine, looks like we got this very proprietary motherboard and supposedly it doesn't even work, but there's a 2.2 GHz Core 2 Duo, an undetermined amount of PNY RAM with heat sinks, uh, a very strange heat sink for the CPU, another 92mm fan, another Delta power supply, and a DVD-ROM. HP Pavilion A6720FPC. Again, another amazing model name. Supposedly with 6 gigs of RAM, a Phenom X4, and an NVIDIA 9100. Oh my, Take you back to 79. So yes, it does have 6 gigs of DDR2. We have another 92mm fan, another uh, DVD writer, and a light-on power supply. Alright, Optiplex 320. Alright, that computer had an 80 gig hard drive in it, SATA hard drive, a melted DVD writer, another 92 millimeter fan, and a Pentium dual core 1.6 gigahertz. It had a bit of RAM in it. Unfortunately, the board looks is BTX and it looks very proprietary with this cooler and the power supply also looks pretty proprietary, so I don't know if I'll even be able to use those. How about another Optiplex 320? Another 92mm, a 160GB hard drive, a DVD-ROM drive, another 1.6GHz Pentium Dual Core, and Again, another proprietary motherboard and power supply. I didn't even check the RAM. How much did we get? Anything good? And a measly gig of DDR2. Optiplex 745. And supposedly has a Core 2 Duo. Let's find out. So lazy. Okay, it had a 2.13 gigahertz Core 2 Duo, uh, a laptop uh, CD drive, uh, a weird little blower fan, might be useful, our first 80 millimeter fan, and proprietary power supply and motherboard. What you thought was something you'd seen, your daddy's dirty magazines. How about an Encore, the same machine again? No idea what we'll have in it because the front plate is missing. Alright, this one surprised me. We actually have an E8400, which ain't too bad, and 4 gigs of RAM, and a little ATI DMS59 connector graphics card. Another 80mm fan, another proprietary 
blower style fan, and another proprietary motherboard and power supply. Alright, we got a Compaq or HP 8000 Elite, supposedly with a Core 2 V Pro. Alright, this gave us another E8400 and 4 gigs of RAM. And a DVD writer again. And another 92mm fan. Unfortunately, the board looks very proprietary, and so does the power supply as well. Acer Aspire T180, supposedly from 2007, and this one is absolutely filthy. It's covered with something. I don't even want to know what it is. Alright, that was the first computer to give up a dial-up modem, but we have an IDE DVD burner, another 92mm fan, our AMD board with a Athlon X2, um, I didn't even look at how much RAM we had, how much RAM did we get? One gig of RAM, a generic card reader, which could be useful, and a power supply. I feel I've lost my composure. Now we got these tiny Acer Veriton L410G, which from the looks of it have Athlon X2s in them, supposedly, and Radeon graphics. And everybody's got their eyes on me, but they can't see what's happening to their order. And I'm cracking jokes. But the man next to me is in a frenzy And he's had a beer See, it just goes to show that even tiny little computers like that usually have something in it that is useful. We got four little tiny fans here, a bunch of SATA cables, two heat sinks, two AMD Athlon CPUs, four gigs of RAM, two wireless cards, and two batteries. Three, two shots with me. He won't feel his and next we have the Sony VAIO, uh, PCV RX 770 Digital Studio PC. Normally I would try to save something like this, but it's missing so many case pieces and clearly it was sitting somewhere where rust was dripping on it. And, and this one is just really beat, so we're just going to take parts out of it. Okay, the Sony VAIO gave us a 2.2 GHz 478 Pentium 4, a little over a gig of DDR1, a uh, USB 2.0 card, a network card, a dial-up modem, a IDE DVD writer, a power supply, a heat sink, and unfortunately this board seems very proprietary. Again, I would have saved this computer, uh, maybe if it was more unique, like it had like video input or you know something interesting, or maybe the hard drive was still there, but it's, uh, it, it was mostly going to be used for parts. Next we just have this Windows XP beige box computer, I actually kind of like the case, so I won't uh, ruin that.
Okay, that's probably one of the first computers where we're probably going to keep all of it. Uh, we have an Athlon 2600 from 1999. That's pretty cool. Hopefully that all works. Uh, we got an NVIDIA GPU. Pro it doesn't say what it is, but it's probably like a, a Vanta or a Riva or a TNT, something like that. Uh, network card. A super cheap no-name dial-up modem. 512 megs of RAM, a neat little card reader, and a DVD-ROM and a DVD burner in beige, which is kind of hard to find, and 350 watt power supply, and a somewhat decent case. Here we have another generic uh, beige box computer. Again, kind of like the case. So we'll probably keep that, but let's see what's inside. Oh, sweet 18. And she smiles to me from far. Okay, we're probably going to keep almost everything here. Uh, we have a Pentium 3 at 667 megahertz. Uh, a network card. A completely unknown uh, video card. I'm sure I could Google the part number, but I'm guessing it's probably like an S3, something like that. Maybe like 16 megs of RAM, I'm not sure. Uh, 80 millimeter fan. A measly 64 megabytes of SD RAM. Power supply. A 50X CD-ROM. Floppy. And a pretty cool case. Across the window. Next we have a Dell Dimension 2350 and sometimes I, I kind of like these cases, they're a bit nostalgic for me. But this one, I don't know what they were doing, but somebody ripped this whole bottom panel off to try to get to the inside of it. So this one doesn't look very salvageable. Alright, the Dell has given us a 2 GHz 478 Pentium 4, 512 megabytes of DDR, another 92 millimeter fan, network card, DVD-ROM, a floppy, power supply, and I think I'm going to keep the front of the case because I know I have others, other cases like this and they might need a better front panel so I kept that. Up next, we have a Presario 7000. Somebody on Facebook mentioned that I should kill it. I have to agree there, but I'll gut it first. See if we got anything good inside. Life so peaceful on my pillow. But I'm breaking up and I'm getting down. I'm trying to scream. There's no sound. I've lost my mind. I'm out of time. It's all the same in the sun. Alright, even the Presario 7000 had some goodies in it. Clearly, the Presario's power supply had died a long time ago, so somebody actually put a decent one in it. This little Antec 350 watt. And then we got a network card, USB 2.0 card, 512 megs of SD RAM, and I'll take a chance on this motherboard, even though this is probably the worst thing in the whole computer. Alright, next is a Pavilion XL844. This one actually isn't too bad. It is missing one piece of plastic up front, but otherwise it's not actually missing anything else. And ideally I'd like to keep it. I know other people, uh, they might not like these so much, but you know, there's not necessarily too much wrong with it, but still, we'll open it up and see what it's got.
All right, taking that case apart changed my mind right away. I'm not going to ever put that case back together. But the computer gave us two CD-ROM drives, a floppy drive, uh, 80 millimeter fans, some slot covers, NVIDIA uh, Riva TNT2 by ASUS, uh, only 64 megs of SD RAM, a generic uh, dial-up modem, and uh, some sort of AMD socket uh, 462 CPU. I think on the front cover it said maybe it was 900 megahertz around there. And uh, the board has this little daughter board permanently attached to it that's like a VRM. And unfortunately the power supply is proprietary to the board, but it's still a pretty cool board, so I think I'll hang on to it. We now have a Presario 5170. And somebody's already opened it up and drilled through the hard drive and took the RAM. So we'll see if this is salvageable at all. See that? See the holes they drilled in the drive there? Yeah, this computer isn't too bad. It's, uh... It's not missing too many things, it's just missing the RAM and a hard drive. And uh, this door hinge is a little broken, but it still goes on there and it still has it. Otherwise, uh, there's only uh, one thing wrong with it. Generic dial-up modem. Now what's cool is I got all these power supplies from one of the stores. And we got two Cooler Master 400 watts and a random no-name power supply that claims to be 800 watts and actually has sleeve cables and stuff. And apparently these all work just fine and they just replaced them as a cautionary measure. But the one power supply that's sitting there left apparently does not work. They claim that it just doesn't work, and I'm going to show you uh, what you can do with these. We're Remember to wear gloves when dealing with these so you don't kill yourself on the capacitors. Because all these capacitors that are in here might still be charged, and if you touch them, they'll go through your heart, you'll zap yourself, and you'll die. So, just wear some big thick gloves. That's all you got to do. When you're done, just button it back up. And see, even from a seemingly worthless power supply, you can get a couple of goodies like a fan and all these spare cables and a little tiny switch. Usually I use these cables for, I could either add onto a power supply, like I could add more leads onto onto certain areas or mostly I use them for adapter cables. I can make I can make for example an adapter cable that just adds more SATA connectors to any power supply. Or if uh, I screw up a, a 24 pin connector on a power supply it's no big deal because I have a replacement and I can just put it right in. Now I also have this XPS uh, 210 but I'm already just gonna give away what's in it because I already know what's in it. There's a uh, Core 2 Duo, but it's a lower end one, maybe like 2 gigahertz or under. And uh, it has a Radeon or an HD Radeon uh, 5450 in it, a little low end GPU. However, it is the fastest GPU out of all the free stuff that we got. And I'm considering this might actually be the platform that we use to put all of our spare parts into to turn this into a working computer. Because I know that we got a couple of E8400s over there. And if there's no motherboards that support 8 gigs of RAM, then this is the only machine that will be the option. Because this, this can only support 4 gigs of RAM. But if we find something that supports 8 gigs of RAM and supports the E8400, 
then we won't be using this and we can just part it all out. There's not much left of the pile anymore. It's mostly gone. All that's left are the two Macintoshes. And down here, this is an Antec case. There's nothing in it, but it's a pretty nice case. And, you know, I'd really like to use that possibly for, for the computer that we ultimately build. We also have this monitor, which came in its original packaging, and it feels as if it's new, so that might actually work for our monitor. And then we also have uh, this widescreen uh, Acer monitor as well, that supposedly they say works. And then there's also this uh, HP Vectra, but I'm not planning on taking this apart. This is kind of a neat computer. I'll refurbish it and play with it just as is. I'm not going to try parting it out or taking any pieces out of it. I think there's only one way to end this video. Pick me up, brought me over with your motorcade. Send me to the dogs when you're through. Wrap it up, show another man what you're making. I mean, it's not a good computer, but it sure can toast a marshmallow. That thing's like perfect.